his eyes are like closed and he's been all passionate and shit. And I'm like, <laughs> hey y'all, welcome to the very first episode of my channel. I'm so excited to be here. I've been wanting to put myself out there a lot more. I've been wanting to experience a lot of new things. Lately, there's been a lot going on in the world, as I'm sure y'all know and everything that's been going on has really pushed me to be the person that i see myself being you know i really want to be able to just connect with a whole bunch of different people i want to be able to share my experiences and things that i've learned throughout my life to help someone else out or encourage them to start something that they've been looking forward to starting for a very long time or or making that move they're afraid to make because they don't know what the outcome is going to be at the end because of covid and because of the shutdown it allowed me to realize that life waits for no one if you have a dream chase it if you have if you want to start that business start it and not saying to just completely forget everything and quit your job and start the business and you know but take small steps that's what i've been doing this whole time and all of last year i've been taking small steps to get to where i am today and i'm still taking small steps to get to where i want to be you know, next year or five years from now, 10 years from now. So I am extremely grateful to be where I am today. COVID has pushed me to start an online business. It has pushed me to start this YouTube channel. It has pushed me to be more active on social media so I can be able to help others who may be having the same thoughts and fears and anxieties that I've been having since before I moved to New York, you know? And it took, it took a lot from me to make that decision to drop everything and move, which is what this video is about today. So with all that being said, I love y'all. I want to encourage everybody to live their, their, their truest self and to be exactly who they want to be and to excel in everything that they put themselves into. So one of the main things that I'm going to be doing throughout a lot of the videos that are on this channel is smoking hookah. <laughs> I love hookah. I actually got this hookah from an old roommate that I had when I first moved to New York. When that roommate moved out, I asked them if I could have their hookah and they said yes. Close mouths don't get fed. So today what I'm going to do is show y'all what I'm smoking and then we'll get into that story. What I want to do is have a conversation with y'all about how I ended up in New York City and how I ended up where I am today. It was a very anxiety-filled process. It was a very confusing process because I was moving from somewhere that I was grounded in and extremely comfortable to somewhere I knew nothing about. You know, I visited New York twice in high school. I just came on vacation. I did all the tourist things. I saw Times Square, the Statue of Liberty, stuff like that, you know? So I didn't really get to experience what it means to live in New York. So what we're smoking on is Al Fakar. <laughs> I was like, Al Fakar. Yeah, let's get it set up. Ooh. This is Kiwi. I'll be good. Y'all light up too. Smoke some, drink some, whatever y'all want to do. There it is. Yes. Today's video is going to be about how I moved to New York. I had a lot of self doubt, um, especially going through like high school and college. I had a lot of feelings about myself that that weren't healthy, that weren't benefiting me in any kind of way, that weren't benefiting the people around me, you know? So, and, and having those thoughts and having all of that negativity in the back of your mind and in your subconscious makes all of that come to reality, you know? So I'm trying my best to, and I have been trying my best to be 
as genuine as possible, as loving as possible, and just spread as much love as I can, y'all. So what up to the people? What up? What up? <laughs> like I said before, I've been to New York a couple times, and those were on trips with my course director, Mr. Stevens. Shout out to Mr. Stevens. What's up, Mr. Stevens? He set up a lot of different interviews and a lot of different workshops and a lot of different um, mock auditions with people that are in the industry now. Because of those trips, it really inspired me to want to live here, you know? I'm from the South. I'm from a very slow moving area in Alabama. Yes, Mobile is a city, but at the same time, it's nowhere near compared to New York, you know? And when I first got here, I fell in love with the buildings. I fell in love with the people, even though they were rude. I fell in love with the fast pace. I fell in love with a whole bunch of different things about it. And I, I made the decision that I wanted to live here. After high school, I went to college. I did four years of college. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I did not graduate, unfortunately. What happened was I did my four years, my fifth year, so I needed a fifth year to graduate only because my sophomore year, I changed my major. Freshman year, all throughout um, my college uh, career, I was a dance, performance, and choreography major. And then I switched to criminal justice my sophomore year because there's, there was a lot going on in the, in the dance department. There was a lot going on with my relationship at the time. And the guy that I was with at the time was someone who I had been around for my junior year and senior year of high school, we wear the same size clothes, same size shoes. We were basically the same height. We uh, were both dancers, we were both singers. We both had the same major. We lived together in the same dorm. Like we both had the same class schedules in college. Um, so we were, we were always around each other and there was a lot of negative things going on at the same time too. I'm gonna get into the negative in a in a separate video, and I'm talking about how I ended up with who I'm with today. Um, so uh, yeah, so I changed my major in an effort to distance myself from that person, and, and in an effort to pursue something that I genuinely wanted to do. I really did want to be in criminal justice. I wanted to be a, a forensic scientist. After the first semester of my sophomore year, those like seven o'clock, eight o'clock classes in the morning and, I had, and, and there were lecture classes and I had to be there that early in the morning. I was like, bro, like y'all, I don't like waking up in the morning. I had um, switched my major back to dance. And because of that, there was only one class that is offered in the fall of your sophomore year that you have to take. Um, in order to graduate on time, and because I changed my major, I wasn't able to take that class. So since I came back to dance, I had to retake my sophomore year over again, basically, like uh, major-wise. Financial aid wasn't having that shit. Financial aid said, we gave you four years and we're not paying for a fifth year. It hurt. It hurt me to not be able to graduate, but once I realized that I wasn't going back to school my fifth year, like my spring semester of my fourth year, I was coming to the realization that I wasn't coming back to graduate. So at that moment, because my plan of graduating and getting a degree didn't work out, I had to come up with a new plan. You know, life throws curveballs. You gotta dodge it and, and keep on moving, you know? I made the decision that I wanted to move to New York. At that time, y'all, I probably had like, at the time I was a server at Olive Garden, I probably had like less than $200 in my bank account. I got my refund from my spring semester of my fourth year. I got my refund and I did my best to save as much of it as I could. I was working my ass off. I had got two different jobs. I ended up having to move out of my apartment. I moved in with a friend. Shout out to Jared, what's up Jared? I ended up moving in with him and one of our other friends, Cliff. I was living with them until I think like the end of November because what happened was at the time Cliff and I were having relations with each other and I knew that I was leaving and I didn't want to lead him on. You know, we slept in the same bed together, we stayed together and we did, you know, do things. I don't think I had sex with Cliff. 
while I was staying there, I had sex with I had sex with him before uh, before <laughs> before I had uh, moved in, um, maybe like a year before. And Cliff is a very genuine guy. He's so loving. He's so he's so kind hearted. He's so giving. But I just knew that my life was going in a different direction, so I didn't want to lead him on. I didn't sleep in the same bed with him. But even that was becoming awkward because I wasn't really like on him I would like ball up in a, in, on the on the side of the bed and be awkward when he would like you know put his arm around me and stuff like that even though I didn't want to be like that and y'all just didn't want to be him on but that ended up turning into a whole nother situation to where one day some shit happened and he uh ended up putting me out so I had to leave and I left and stayed with my friend Chloe mind you by this point, I had saved up probably about like $3,000. Y'all, I mismanaged my money so bad. I was like, I had the mindset of, okay, I'm moving to New York. You know, this is about to be a whole new chapter. This is about to be a brand new start for my life. I'm about to start something new for myself, you know? So with that being said, I was like, I also had the thought of, since I'm about to be doing all that, then I need a whole new wardrobe and I need some new shoes. I need... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, I know. Talk about me, laugh at me, I know. Me and Chloe went to like, and we ended up driving to an outlet mall, and I bought out stupidly, stupidly. Oh, I ended up selling my car to my line brother, to Nick. What's up, Nick? Sold my car to Nick, I think for about $1,500, $2,000. At this point, I had around like $3,000 in my account. Me and Chloe, y'all, went to an outlet mall and bought so much shit. <laughs> I was buying her shit, I was buying me shit, and I, I was, and Chloe's one of those people that's good, that's real good at talking you into doing something that you really don't want to do. <laughs> She's good at talking you into some shit. And by the time I came back, y'all, I was sick, and I didn't, and I didn't even return nothing. And it's crazy, y'all. I know. <laughs> because I sold majority of my clothes that I had. I sold majority of my shoes that I had. I sold furniture all through Facebook Marketplace. Um, I sold all these things and then turned right, turned my ass right back around and went to an outlet and bought a whole bunch of shit. What are they doing at that? You know, knowing I'm about to move to New York, New York City. That was about, that was right before my birthday, probably a week before my birthday. And so I only had like $900 in my account, you know? That's how much I spent, yeah. I booked a one-way ticket to New York through Spirit. That's all I could afford at the time, you know? So I took a, I took a one-way flight with Spirit. Spirit ate my ass up. Ate my ass up. We went to New Orleans and then I was late, y'all, I was late. <laughs> to my flight and y'all know spirit charges for everything i had to pay like 130 dollars and on top of that my uh check-in bag was overweight so i had to pay for that <laughs> uh that was i think she charged me like another like 30 to 50 dollars so by the time i moved here i had 700 dollars in my pocket but in the back of my mind, y'all, at the same time, even though I only had $700, I was thinking like, when I move to New York, you know, it's gonna be nothing for me to find a job. I'm gonna be auditioning my ass off. Like I'm gonna get booked immediately. I'm gonna start making money. I'm gonna be able to move into my own place. You know, I already had this in the back of my mind, trying to make it a reality in my head before I even knew that it could possibly be a reality. I moved here October 17, 2017. Before I moved up here, I was having conversations with one of my friends on Instagram that I met through Instagram. He was a dance friend. He was real cool, real genuine, down to earth. He was so, so nice to the point where he uh, invited me to come stay with him when I moved to New York because I was telling him my plans, everything that I was going through. So I was like, you know, what's up? Everything was good. Everything was real good at first. I stayed there probably for about a month and then it got to the point where he started catching feelings for me. And that's not something that I wanted to happen because 
you know, we were just friends. I wanted to be friends. I needed somewhere to stay. I, I, I wanted to focus on auditioning. I wanted to focus on bettering myself as a human. I wanted to focus on just making it in New York, y'all. And it was crazy. And that's, that, that might have to be a story for another day. Long story short, the very first night, I ended up sleeping on his couch. And... <laughs> y'all the first night i slept there the next morning i woke up my thighs and my legs were covered in bed bug bites i was so tight i was so mad y'all i was so mad so i had to get like this special cream and shit and like get that taken care of i had told him what happened and he was like in denial saying that he don't got bed blah blah blah, blah. but nigga, i'm sleeping on your couch for the first time and i wake up with bumps and red bites all over me from your it had, it had to have come from your couch you know so um anyway i told him that i needed to sleep in his bed um well, no, I didn't tell him. I asked him if I could sleep in his bed because of the situation, you know. I asked him if I could sleep in his bed. He said, yeah, sure. We ended up going to classes a lot together, dance classes a lot together. We ended up, you know, just spending a lot of time together. And, you know, I'm I'm real down to earth, y'all. That's just who I am naturally and genuinely. And that, that came off towards him. I was working on my resume and he was getting mad at me because he wanted to take me to the Statue of Liberty. That wasn't my mindset at the time. My mindset wasn't to be on some tour shit. It was to be on some business shit. The next day, a few days later, he ended up getting mad with me. So he told me that he liked me. He was catching feelings for me. And in the midst of our conversation, y'all, he like walked over and came and just kissed me. like. And I was like, and the whole time he was kissing me, <laughs> his eyes were like closed and he's been all passionate and shit. And I'm like, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? A lot changed after that, after I told him how I felt. He started sending messages about threatening to put me out because um, of, you know, different situations in November. It got to a point where he ended up putting me out. Luckily, there was someone that um, I knew. It was my ex. Ended up staying with him, ended up moving in with him. And then I was living in Harlem. Staying on the couch in the living room. And, and during that whole time we were broken up, which was a very awkward situation because yes, we were still having sex. Stay with my ex to December 2017. And then I was going through Facebook and the different groups, like the housing groups and things like that, where people post apartments or post homes and stuff that they have for rent or rooms that they have for rent. And I, end, I ended up finding the place that I'm in today. I love this place. I was so excited about this place. Like my room gets so much natural light. My room has a balcony attached to it. And you know, I just completely fell in love with the space. But the other two roommates that were living here at the time, were very down to earth, very genuine, very open. Um, they were both gay. We all just clicked. Before I had even had the place, I um, I needed a state ID because at the time my Alabama license was um, expired. You know, for your ID, you have to put an address down, y'all. <laughs> Before I even had this place, like at the DMV, I had it so set in my mind that I was gonna be here because I loved it that much. Uh, before I even made a deposit, before, um, Cause, you know i couldn't afford the first month and the security so i was like trying to negotiate with him and in the middle of those negotiations was when i was trying to get my id before i even knew that i was going to be living here y'all i ended up telling the lady at the dmv to put this address down on my state id i'm so thankful that it all worked out because i would have been looking real crazy if i had an id with an address on it that i don't even stay at so i ended up talking to eric more um and expressing to him how i just couldn't afford it i ended up telling him that i didn't want to get the place and i was just going to go through the process of getting a new state id and changing my address when i when i found somewhere else to stay i think he was in a place to where he had to move and because of that and i think i was one of the only people that were expressing my interest in this place he ended up telling me that i could just move in with my first month's rent to be honest, I didn't even have the money for the for the first month's rent. At the time, I probably had like 
$300 in my account. I was looking for jobs. I couldn't get hired nowhere. Out of the blue, I was having a, a conversation with one of my really good friends, Gabby. Shout out to Gabby. What's up, Gabby? I was having a conversation with her about everything that was going on and everything that I was going through and talking about having to possibly come back home. That's just something that you just don't even want to think about because there are those people that's like expecting you to fail or expecting you to move back where you came from and having that moment of saying, I told you so. I didn't want that to happen for me. My ultimate goal was to not have to move back home. <laughs> So I was having that conversation with her about everything that was going on. And then she ended up telling me, she was like, friend, she was like, friend, why am I just not hearing about all of this? Why didn't you call me? Why didn't you like ask me for the money? Like, you know, what's, you know, what's up? And she was like, what you need? Let me know what you need. And then just from that one conversation, she literally took it upon herself to tell me that she would give me $700 to help me get my place and that I would not have to pay her back until I was able to pay her back. And then I think I got like two or three hundred dollars from my mom to help me pay my first month's rent to be able to move in here. I still didn't have a job. Auditioning was not going great at all. Contrary to what I had planned in my head, you know, life throws that curveball. I was applying for a bunch of different serving jobs since that was my background. One day on the whim, I was like going through my Facebook and Instagram or something and I saw an ad for like a new product that Apple had came out with or something like that. I was like, you know what? It would be amazing if I was at Apple. Where I'm from, we don't have Apple stores in Mississippi where I went to college and where I'm from in Alabama. You know, the closest Apple store is in New Orleans or in Atlanta. I was like, oh, New York does have Apple stores. Like, they, you know, I can get a job here. You know, so I put in an application. I'll tell y'all how I got the job and things like that in a separate video, but I ended up getting the job. They ended up offering me the position. I ended up um, getting paid more than I thought I would get paid, which allowed me to be able to pay my rent. I'm extremely grateful for Apple because they take such good care of their employees. So I've been at Apple now for three years, actually. I've progressed there quickly, so I'm extremely grateful for Apple. So, that's a little bit about my background and, you know, how I ended up being in the space that I am today in New York. I just wanted to do this video to let y'all know that it is possible. Whatever you are thinking of, whatever you are wanting to do in life, whatever you are wanting to accomplish in life, it is possible. You know, I may not have reached the goal of being a performer on Broadway, but at the same time, I did reach a goal of being very independent in New York, being able to pay my own rent, being able to pay my own bills, being able to buy my own clothes and shoes and pay my phone bill and, you know, do things like that. I've been able to support myself and that was definitely a goal of mine. I still definitely have the goal of becoming a performer on Broadway, but we know Broadway is closed right now because of COVID, but I'm excited for the future. But I really wanted to make this video to show y'all to never give up on y'all dreams to never allow yourself to hold yourself back. You are your strength. All it takes is work ethic. It takes taking small steps each and every day to get to that huge goal that you want to make it to. All you have to do is start. I'm here for y'all. I'm going to be having a lot more videos i'm going to post every wednesday and sunday each day is going to be about different content i might be interviewing some of my friends i might be doing like a day in the life i might be cooking for bay and i might be like doing all kinds of shit. i'm excited for what this channel is going to turn into i'm excited for all of us to grow and to live life to the fullest in our own way if you like my story and you want to see more comment down below like this video, give me a huge thumbs up, please. I would really appreciate it. And subscribe. And with all that being said, I really appreciate y'all. I love y'all. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace.